I said I wasn't gonna rev it up, but it actually ended up hitting like 6,000 RPM. So they love the way I do my hustle. They love the way I treat my people, how I'm staying humble. This is to my fans, I never told you this. I never got a chance to tell you, but I owe you this. I hope I get a chance to meet you, we can smoke to this. And we can talk about life and where to go from this. What is up, guys? It's your boy, Jesse. What's up, guys, guys? All right, guys, so I'm gonna be bringing you a little video on the E46. So, um... As you guys know, in the last video, I mentioned that uh, the Free 46, as mentioned in the comments, um, it didn't work out. It's sitting back there. Um, so I actually had to fix the 330. And so I went ahead and bought new boots from the actual throttle body uh, all the way through to the intake. And I just wanted to give it a little refresh because I ended up having to use the MAF from the 323. And this being a 3 liter, um, you're not supposed to interchange MAFs and so since i did that the car was running kind of weird but it still ran but i was getting like terrible gas mileage so i think that might be associated with the math it's reading wrong it's reading bridge or lean whatever it is but uh so i went ahead and got those two uh boots on there as you guys can see right there there's those are brand new i think they're euro parts or whatever you call or whatever they're called and now i'm gonna go ahead and show you guys the intake and of course you can take the kit out of a ricer, but you can't get the ricer out of the kit. So I had to go with the eBay intake. Um, you, I had this on my Prelude and it worked out. Uh, it was literally super cheap, like 60 bucks. So I had to do that. Unfortunately, I already ran into an issue, so I'm gonna mention that right now. But as you guys can see, Gus is holding the intake there. Um, this is literally a, like a knockoff of a Spectre intake. It's it's even cheaper than a, a Spectre, and then. Here you give here you have the intake or the coupler that goes from the MAF. Um, and then this one is the one that connects these two sections here. Unfortunately, uh, the issue that I ran into is that this coupler here, it doesn't actually fit onto the MAF for the three liter. Let me grab the MAF. This is the MAF for the three liter. When mated to the actual coupler, um, it's way bigger. So I actually ended up having to run to Pep Boys. Well, I actually ran to AutoZone first, but they didn't have it. So I ran to Pep Boys and they have like a good little section for uh, couplers. They had a bunch of vibrant stuff. It actually even surprised me. It was, it kind of surprised me how expensive that they were, but I ended, I ended up getting like a $15 one and it works. I'm just gonna have to cut up that coupler that didn't work for the math. Basically gonna have to stack them. Uh, I'll let you guys see that, but I'm gonna have to stack them and then I'm gonna place this vibrant coupler over that and it'll work. It's just not the, like the prettiest thing I could always order another coupler or see if the company is willing to ship me out another coupler and then put it on, but I'm gonna make this work. So guys, as you guys can see, uh, this was the coupler that uh, we had before. This is the one that like transitioned from like a I don't know this, what this is, like 2.5 to 3 inch, I guess. Um, but I just went ahead and spliced it, or cut it, just cut it in three pieces. Um, so I got rid of the middle, the middle section that actually causes the sizes to be uh, changed. And then I'm going to go ahead and stack these in a manner like this. I'll literally just show you off the, the pipe because it'll make it easier. But once, like, fully assembled, it's going to be airtight. But it's, it's not ideal, so hopefully I can get a couple that's the right fitting. And I'll make it work. So here's one over the other. This was the same coupler before, before. And then you pop this one inside the vibrant. And this will simply slip over the pipe. The pipe like this. And then the math will go on this, on this side. Uh, like, I don't like this, this idea because it kind of creates like an airflow. I mean, this will be the pipe will be inside these two rings, but like I think it creates like a chamber of air that could possibly cause the map to be reading a little wrong. But we're gonna see how the car reacts. I mean, the car was running perfectly fine with a 2.5 liter um, MAF, so I think having the three liter MAF is gonna make, it's gonna be better than nothing. So something I noticed upon installation is, uh, I noticed that they were slightly different in size. So, I mean, I just take, I would advise for you to just look at your pipes and see if they're the same, um, if they're not. Um, the way it worked out better for me was I put the longer one on top and then you just kind of got to work or kind of like move it until it really works. Uh, what I found it kind of is in this shape um, and then I'm going to go ahead and snake it from the bottom so you guys can see how it's roughly going to look. I think this is the format that works. This could be kind of 
So basically, this is the general uh, layout it's going to lay in. Um, as you guys can see, um, Gus will get it from the front actually. Um, built-in brake like air ducts it's actually gonna work out very good it's gonna basically hit it right there you guys can't see but it's really dark but intake is literally like right there so it's gonna be literally sucking in the air that goes in there it's really straightforward uh, all I have to do is put the math in um, and then that's basically like a little spacer and then I'm gonna do the little mod Huele rico. Alright guys, so the intake actually ended up taking a lot longer than I anticipated. Um, I wasn't really liking how the fitment was fitting, so I ended up just chopping off one of the actual uh, pipes that was given. And I just made it a straight section instead so that it would fit perfectly flush. Um, in the fender well um, like I mentioned this the fender well actually holds the temperature uh, display for the outside temperature so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, install that right now here's the sensor right there uh, but as you guys can see uh, if it's good in there um, all I have to do is fit up the actual um, fender liner and it should be good to go um, hopefully it fits good because I mean I don't know if you can see the angle but yeah I'm gonna go ahead and install that and it should be quick all right guys so I'm officially done I got the car done I buttoned everything up I put the splash guard or whatever the freak you want to call it and it's good um, I actually ended up having to use some zip ties down here because I didn't really like um, it hitting this um, I know it really wouldn't do anything but I just didn't want it to hit there and I made it I think it might be closer on this edge here or it might be laying on this edge don't really care um, it'll still move some if necessary but I'm gonna go ahead and turn on the car so you guys can get a little sound clip but I don't expect it to be uh, very loud um, it, w it wasn't very loud on my prelude um, it did create like a little whistling noise so maybe it might create it on this one and you did not, have to cut the pipes to make it shorter right? not entirely sure but yeah like Gus said right now um, in the last clip I mentioned that I had to cut the, the one of the pipes um, before it turned so it was just a straight piece of tubing and that actually worked out even better than uh, Having to like maneuver everything um, just because like I did mention I had to modify my uh, my My intake coupler so as you guys can uh, you guys probably can't see but there's actually three layers of coupler there So it's one two three um, That was just like the little um That was the little modification I had to do so in in total, I ended up having to do two modifications uh, to get this intake to work, but it's cool. Um, I'll go ahead and turn it on. I haven't even turned it on, so I'll, it's going to be a first for both of us. Let me go ahead and see inside the car. So inside the car, you guys haven't really seen much of this car. Let me see. Let me, let me give you guys a little inside tour. So this is a 330 2001. Um, it's an automatic. I wish it was a five speed, um, but it being my daily driver, I really do not mind having an automatic. It really comes in handy when like you're on the freeway and you just hit some traffic. It's really easy to just put it in D and uh, just cruise. But I, I, I tend to actually drive it in manual mode because I mean, having driven mainly manual all my life, I really love manual. So yeah, let me go ahead and give you guys a little sound clip. Oh, in here. So like I do want to mention the previous owner was a young kid and he smoked a lot of cigarettes Unfortunately, um, I don't know how exactly it happened, but he ended up um, Catching the center console on fire. It ended up fucking up the seat and That's something that sucks. Um, I would have switched out the seats from that car be but uh, Those those are heated seats and this car does not come with heated, heated seats um, but besides that that those seats aren't in the greatest condition either so This will make do the seat isn't ripped but it is burned. If you guys can see over there, um, those things are taken off on either side, as well as the, the sunroof, it droops. Um, not very ecstatic about that, but it is what it is. Um, I ended up paying 500 bucks for this car, and I mean, I've, I've had to mix and match two cars to make it a whole, but besides that, it's honestly kind of, it's kind of good. I mean, I had to do a lot of stuff to the engine bay to make it work and stuff, so 
I'm not really happy about that, but I'll go ahead and give it a start now. I'm gonna start it up, Gus. We can leave it open. Huh? We can leave it open. Damn. So, I mean, it turns on, so that's a plus. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and let Gus handle the audio under the hood and I'll rev it up a little bit. I mean, this car is, it's, it's cold. This is a cold start, so I'm not gonna rev it up like too hard, but it is what it is. I said I wasn't gonna wrap it up, but it actually ended up hitting like 6,000 RPM. So, um, but yeah, guys, that was just a quick little video. And it's been so much work getting this car to work, uh, but it's honestly pretty nice. Um, I know I could always sell it and I could get something more reliable. So I'm just gonna enjoy it. Um, it is, it is fun. To, it, it is fun to have a car like this because it is um, really similar to the IS300 and us having four of them. Um, that's something that we truly love. So it's good to see. Uh, you know the competition that the IS300 holds and uh, it's honestly a really good car um, I wish it was a 5 speed or a 6 speed but who knows who knows what the future entails um, like I, but I'm not gonna be making uh, too too many videos on this car because this car is literally I I would love to modify it but it's honestly I need it as a daily a dedicated daily for right now and then who knows but I don't know I don't think it's gonna I don't think it's gonna stay in the family forever it is a clean title so I do like it, but um, I don't know. It is what it is. But yeah, guys, I thank you for so much for uh, tuning in again. Just wanted to make, just wanted to quickly make this video. I'm just gonna, just gonna be putting everything away because there's a mess in the garage. But yeah, guys, thank you so much, and I'll catch you in the next one.